Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and this is the YouTube Yacht Project. There is a vacation rental industry in our area and my wife and I want to get into the vacation rental business as a side gig from our full-time careers and slowly grow it into a full-time business that we can retire into. But we don't want to do just your average normal day vacation rental. We want something that's going to stick out when people are scrolling through the internet looking for a place to stay. So we decided themed vacation rentals. And the first one, well it's a boat. More specifically, it's a paddle wheeler. We are a river town, so it kind of fits the theme of the area. If you've been on the channel for a while, this is a great refresher of all the work we've done to come this far. And if you're new to the channel, there is not a better way to get caught up on the project. If you want to see any more videos that are a little bit more detailed about the steps we took, check out the description. I'll have a link to all the videos we've done on the project so far. I hope you guys enjoy this video. To get everything started, we rented Dirt Perfect's John Deere 120 excavator. I had a hunch there'd be quite a bit of rock in this area, and I was right. There was a lot of rock. It wasn't within three or four inches of digging down through the quote unquote topsoil. We ran into some pretty heavy rock. You can see Neil Kof from Neil Kof Dig Drive DIY checking grade for me there. He actually came down. I'll put a link in the description. He built a quick attach for my John Deere 755 tractor and brought it down, and while he was down there, he ran great for me so we could get this thing excavated out and ready to dig footers. another piece of Dirt Perfect's equipment to dig the footers out. This is a couple weeks later. This is his Caterpillar 304 Mini Excavator. We ran into quite a bit of rock again, which is to be anticipated with the amount of rock we ran into the first time. The goal was 24 inches wide and a minimum depth to allow us to have at least 10 inches of concrete for the footer. It was a little bit of a battle, but we were able to get through it. All right, so we have one, two, three, four pins. That rectangle we first dug is now re-squared. Or at least we have it marked so we can remark this bow line. I'll put some orange paint on them. Maybe you guys can see them a little better. So this will be where the bow starts coming together. I finished digging out that bow shape later that evening and it turned out really great. About another week later, we were able to actually get the footers poured. That is man behind the scenes, Aaron Boone. He's a junior boiler maker and this day he had actually just gotten off of night shift of welding inside a boiler and on his way home stopped past the poor footers. That is pretty amazing. It goes without saying, a job like this cannot be done without awesome family and awesome friends to help get you through it. And this is a perfect example of that. You can see we built a little chute out of some 2x4s and plywood. I was trying to save money and not have to get a pump truck, and it actually worked fairly decent. Weather changed pretty drastic on us. That's a, probably about a week later when we actually got the ICF forms. These are new Dura I mean, ICF awesome. forms. It's about two and a half inches of expanded polystyrene or styrofoam on each side of it. And then the core of it is six inches wide. So you'll have a six inch concrete steel reinforced core with two and a half inches of styrofoam insulation on either side of it. A lot of people ask what my relationship with Dirt Perfect is. I used to work for him full time. And when I worked for Dirt Perfect full time, ICF is the part of the job that I did. Myself and another guy named Clint, which you will see later in the video. We did a lot of ICF and I absolutely loved it. It really is a fantastic product. There are a lot of different manufacturers. The main reason I went with New Dura on this is because of the sweeping radius of the bow. They're eight foot block and it makes it a little bit easier to do longer radius. But there's several other manufacturers out there and pretty much aside from the installation aspect of it, performance wise, you're gonna get the same. 
You can see we cut out our own custom T-blocks here. Just double checking my width. Perfect. Here I am working on that radius I was talking about. In order to get that radius, you have to cut notches between each, re each web. And then you can just kind of bend it right on around. It actually works pretty well. Now, other manufacturers like Fox Block, you can get specific radius. They'll make custom radius block for you, and you can cut them as That's well. But good. Fox Block is only about four feet long, and it makes it a little bit more difficult to kind of get that radius. With the eight foot length into Dura, I have a little bit more material to play with. Looking good. Right there. Okay. Still look good? Mm -hmm. Make sure you're all the way on that bottom 2 by 4 down there. You're just a little, there you go. What do you think? Yep. Looks good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do the other direction now. Switch it back to where it was. 2020 was a yep. crazy year for everybody. There you go. Because of COVID, the think. kids were home quite a bit this winter. Mm -hmm. So if I had the opportunity, I tried to get our youngest out like here with that. me to kind of help, but also to kind of try to teach her a little bit about building and try to develop a few life skills and really just to kind of spend some time together. I'm trying to catch at least three studs each direction. All right, let's head to the other side. I was telling them and you at the same time, it's like we're having you and, and 24,000 of our closest friends working together. Isn't this nice? Because we're relying solely on YouTube revenue for this project and I have a full-time career and I work for Dirt Perfect part-time on the side, we don't always have the time to get out and work on this. So it's taking us a little bit of time to actually get this part of the project done. An issue we were having was the mud kept washing in around the block. Now typically you're going to pour your footer, the next day you're going to start stacking. A couple days later you will pour your walls and you don't have to worry about it. But you can see here I had to keep digging the mud out. I decided to go ahead, put some perforated pipe in for drain tile, some fabric, and some stone to go ahead and start backfilling. Could you, uh, could you pull that in for me? Yeah, I got you. How far you want me to? All oh, about there? Yeah. I knew as long as I was careful and put the equal amount of stone on the outside that is on the inside, we wouldn't run into any problems. And sure enough, it, it actually worked. Like I said, this is not the typical way you would do it, but for us, it's what we had to do to keep digging that mud out over and over and over again. It was a lot of work, but it's done. On this back side, I had to use five gallon buckets. On this side, I was able to use the tractor. It all worked out and we can move on with the project. That looks awesome. That felt great and i'm kind of bummed i didn't realize i had the camera off it felt like a big moment but that's okay we've got one more connection to make and that's where it actually drains out uh, right there so let's get that done this is where done. There we go there we go sack sack this little scrap piece it's right there Snaps in there. One more. There we go. And that goes right in here.
I mentioned earlier we were making our own custom T forms. New Dura used to make an actual T form, and some manufacturers like Fox Block continue to make T forms. But what we always found when we were stacking block is the intersection of the pre made T was never where you actually needed it in the wall, and we just typically cut them out ourselves. You just stack the wall through, and wherever the intersecting wall is, you just cut that block out. That way the concrete can flow through, and you throw some straps up, and you're good to go. Once I got three courses up, I went ahead and marked out the door to get that door cut out. The reason I'm using a sawzall for this part, we're going to go across the studs and in this section from here to here and there to there where the web attaches to the stud, there's a little piece of metal, a metal bar in there and I can't get that with a handsaw, not without tearing it up. So we'll use the sawzall and cut that. Just kind of have to go slow with it. Because the ICF is pretty much close to 12 inches wide after everything is said and done, 2x12s work perfect for all the door bucks and window bucks. And we do use treated lumber, it is going to be in contact with that concrete so there will be a little bit of moisture. Just it's just a good idea to always use treated timber or treated lumber anytime it actually comes in contact with that concrete. Perfect situation to show you guys something. So a few people have asked how come we don't tie the rebar to the webs. Well, when they sit in, these snaps like this by themselves, these lock in really tight. You don't have to tie it, it holds it in place. But I did mention, depending on the rebar schedule, I can get them back out. Depending on the rebar schedule, sometimes we do have to tie it. And this is a perfect example. Can you see where it overlaps this 90? There's a 90 that comes, there's a 90 that comes out of this wall and turns down here. Well, there's not enough room for both of those as it passes that 90 to snap into those locks. So in that instance, we do tie it. I'm not skilled enough to use pliers and actual tie wire, so I use these little cheat ties and this little cheat tie tool. It does the job. It does the job just fine. And once we get past where they're running on top of each other, then they just snap into where they need to go. And we're good to keep moving. And you just flip it over. Cut the other side. Okay. I just need this back one. There it goes. There it goes. This one's not going to fit just right in there. I bent it around a cedar tree, so the may not be the most accurate bend. I will throw a couple ties up here at the point. I wanted to try to get a little bit of a roll at the bow like you would typically see on the bow of a ship. Now I know I can add foam to the outside and stucco to the outside and pretty much build it up however I want, but I've never done this with ICF and I thought it would be a great time to kind of experiment with it. So this is me 
cutting some curfs in here. Like I said, it was actually a subscriber that made this suggestion in the comments to cut this curve out and try to get it to roll. So this is me kind of experimenting with it. I was worried about it. putting the strap right on the stud because then I couldn't screw to it. But if I go right through the eye there. Ah, beautiful. And then I don't know if that's what I want to do or not. Let's try it. happens now. It'll probably come off a little bit as long as I don't do it all the way. I just don't know if it's doing what I want it to do. You know? I don't know if it is. Let's put a straight edge. Well, I guess there is a gap right there, which does mean it's, you know, a little bit. So i tell you what I was trying to do and what we're gonna have to do to make this work. I was trying to cut everything but this last little bit of this stud so that there'd still be some integrity between the two as far as strength goes. But I just don't think that's gonna allow me to do it because I think it's still trying to compress this. I think I'm gonna have to take the handsaw because that's not deep enough to reach and cut that last little bit of stud. It's just gonna be more strapping but if that's what it takes to get the look, then that's what it takes. All right, so I got the plywood strips across there. You can see I cut all the way through the studs all the way down. And if we put a straight edge on there, it's got a little something going on. The one thing we're gonna have to look out for in the long run here is this obviously changes. This is an 18 inch block. We cut some out and now we're a little under 18 inches. But we just have to adjust for that on the last course. And the last course is technically a half course. We rip the blocks in half. So in theory, all we should have to do is just kind of add a little bit as we go. We'll set a string or laser up or something to figure that out. And hopefully whenever we get these blocks on here, you can see a little bit of a pitch or a little roll. Yep, I am loving this. Can you see it? Can you, let me get a better angle here. I'll get out here. We've got this cut made here. You guys noticed it's quite a bit larger and the angle's a little bit steeper. We'll get this strap together then we have to do the kerf cuts because this part has part radius in it and part whatever this is in it so So this is the outside, right? Which means this is the inside. This side gets the kerf cuts on it. Yes? Yes. Let's see if we can get it on the wall, I guess. fingers there bud you're getting aggressive with yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> you could throw a bobcat through that couldn't you that's a big old gap well, I guess that's a spray foam is for let's run it So you can see we're making pretty good progress at this point. We even have the wheel supports cut out and formed up towards the stern there. If you want to see any of these videos in more detail, be sure to check out the description. I'll have a link to every video that we have made up to today's This day. is where the paddle wheel will go, right there, and that'll support the paddle wheels. That was the last thing we did, and you can tell I never did finish this side. I just ran out of time. So just to keep things moving, we're just going to go ahead and do this for that. Moving right along. Love it absolutely love it i did add a few extra pieces of bracing on this side that i've got to get on this side
the next thing we're going to get this transom window installed. So we have just a little minor problem down here. See this gap right here? On the top side of this block, on the bottom side of the block, it's pretty tight, but on the top there's a gap. Whenever we had our half block on here, I couldn't get it to interlock because obviously it doesn't line up from one course or one side to the other. I think what's causing that is I think I don't have enough up pressure on that. I think that's got a little sag in it. Show you from the bottom side. See this gap right here? We've got to try to get that closed up. So what I'm going to do, I grabbed a couple of my logging wedges. Homestead logging, not real life logging. Anyway, I grabbed a couple of my tree wedges right there. We're going to drive them under the end, see if we can get this to come up a little bit. And that'll be an experiment to see if that's what we got to do to get that closed up. Great. Okay. So much for pre-starting one. That's okay. You guys could just walk back to me. That would be that would be a huge help. Yeah, I did pull a piece of rebar up on the bottom side. Of that one right there, it's got rebar ties in it to hold it in place. See the rebar ties. Anyway, just a little bit of bar across that window for a lintel. And then looking at it from this side, you can see it in there. Looks really good. It looks really good. This wall will not be load bearing. The only thing it has to support is itself really. So I just put one number four bar in there for that lintel. We've got to get this center section cut out. You can see towards the bottom, it's already been cut out, but we're gonna go ahead and cut this out. That way the concrete can flow around. We're just making our own T-form, some brackets, the stiff back over the door to the bow we go. Make that my alarm clock. Achoo! There we go. Concrete can flow right around, all tied together. I've got to make a 90 rebar to go in here though. We'll do that in a little bit. So the next step up here is continue these straps the rest of the way up the wall. Still have the top course to do on each side, but it'll be easier to do that off the walk boards. So let's set up how we're gonna do the walk boards. Starting with this. I think I may add one more support across there.
So you can tell when we start laying this next course. The top course is ripped in right. half from a now full block. This is not going to be like a tight Endura block is 18 inches. Fit. To get the height I want for the basement, spray foam I only caulking. need 9 inches. The caulk. basement height will be 8 okay. foot to finish ceiling. Okay. Now if you're going to continue stacking on up in a regular house, you would keep the block okay. full height, pour the wall, then you would install the floor system and keep on stacking up. But because we're stopping Go. at the next level with the ICF, Go. the next level will be a concrete floor across there. We can rip this in half Love it. and be good to go. Oh, I think that'll work fine. The last block we have to get installed is this bow piece. This is how we're doing the braces in the bow. We're putting them on the outside. And if you follow Dirt Perfect or you've ever done ICF, you understand why. These braces, they're made for pushing the concrete. They're not made for pulling the concrete. If we put these on the inside to where they would be leaning out and it would be relying on the strength of that stake, pulling out of the ground to hold it in place, we would be in trouble. On the outside like this, with the bow leaning out, the weight will sit back on that turnbuckle. If we need to push in, we can push in easily. That's what they're made for, so that's how we're gonna do it. This bow, it's gonna wanna split open on us. That's what it wants to do. With this seam right here, with the concrete pushing against itself and both sides leaning out, it's gonna wanna split wide open on us. So we gotta do everything in our power to make sure it doesn't do that. Because this part of the wall rolls out and it's not perfectly flat, we end up with this dead space behind the brace. So the last thing we gotta do for the braces is go through and shim all these out. Tripod issue. That's fine. You guys are fine. Okay. All right. Back to the time lapse. So I got a lot of comments about this part. A lot of people saying, Mike, portholes are round. And that's what these are supposed to be, by the way. These are going to be portholes up in the bow. And these portholes will be round. The easiest way to frame out any window shape, whether it's a round porthole or an oval transom that you'd see over like a master tub or a window or a door entrance, the easiest way to do any shape is always frame that buck out or rough frame out a square shape and then put the window in and you can frame out around it to what it needs to be. So these will be round portholes. They're just a square window buck because that's going to be the easiest way to get the result we're after. Okay, so I was putting those portholes in. Tony got those straps on and foamed up top. Those on foamed. Those straps on, same on the outside. And... Everything foamed up there.
down, bud. Huh? You want her flop down? Yeah, we probably should. Just oh, oh, we'll do her. We'll do her. And it's Sean. You even got Sean here tonight? We got Sean. We He's, got the whole crew, man. This is, a, it's like old times. It's like a reunion. You gonna, you gonna come out and help? Sure, man. I mean, I'll do it. I told the people on the camera, he figured out what side of the truck to be on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, uh, uh, you you poured a lot of boats before. Um, you know, surprisingly, this is my first one. This is your first boat. That is a shocker. Yeah. Okay. I've been in a boat. You've been. <laughs> So we saw Aaron Boom, man behind the scenes, up on the walkboards again. He's going to be running the hose for us. The Dirt Perfect is on the outside for another set of eyes. Ideally, minimum crew for pouring ICF is three. You got one guy on the hose, one guy on the outside watching for things that might blow out. One guy's on, on the outside looking for things that might blow out. You are dealing with styrofoam and plastic blowouts are definitely a possibility. But if you've done it enough times and you know what to look for, you can typically avoid those. What I'm doing here is I'm feeling the wall to see where the concrete's at. Aaron, or the guy on the hose, cannot see far enough down the wall on this first lift. We're going to do three lifts all the way around. On this first lift, you kind of have to feel and see where it's at and signal to him when to move on. Again, Mike's on the outside checking, I'm on the inside checking, and once it gets high enough, you just kind of wave him on. On the second lift, he can see far enough down to know where he needs to be. Captain was telling Aaron they don't have to get it all the way to the top. If they're an inch or two low, it's not a big deal because as he's explained before, that concrete floor will go across the top of there. It'll fill in any voids and imperfections. Made it to the brace. I'm just gonna keep the cam camera rolling so we don't risk Missing catastrophic failure. <laughs> this is going to be the turning point. Wouldn't that be cool if that thing just unzipped like a zipper right now? It would certainly help with you. It would. That'd be a boat full of YouTube gold. Yeah, that's good. You're good. On the home stretch. Oh, this, we got enough fuel. This is the 18 yard question. Can we go the distance? Got around the bow there, everything went good. Cleveland's forms held awesome. Looks good, we gotta adjust the walls a little bit. We are on the home stretch. Boys, we gotta make it? That is hopper working. I mean, we can tell that was a hopper, you know? How, how deep are we there? Eight feet. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all would have lost. About two courses down. I'm gonna shut him off. Okay. I think we all would have lost the bet if we were going to make it or not. Oh. Pour the rest over the wall right now. <laughs> Don't waste the rock. I'm glad I bet you 18 yards of concrete. Captain, bet. how much do you like us right now? <laughs> You're just lucky you got a good crew that didn't spill any. <laughs> All right. Look at that, boys. Made it. I like it. And then we're going to wet set a bunch of rebar. Like so.
The braces you see now and you saw us install earlier in the video, the yellow portions of that where you see kicked out, those are turnbuckles and you can turn those to adjust the wall. We lean the walls in just slightly. The braces are made to kind of take the weight. They don't really pull the wall very well. So we always lean the braces in just slightly. And when the wall is topped off, what Mike is down there doing now is he's cranking that brace out to get it plumb and to straighten the wall. Pump truck is gone. They're perfect. Later. It's gone. Man like behind the scenes. I'm glad we got to see you too. <laughs> and I'm sure they're happy too. Thanks, man. I do yep. appreciate it. No problem, buddy. See you guys. Yeah. Everybody's gone. And it's back to quiet. It's nice out here. It's beautiful out here. Absolutely beautiful out here. And we are one step closer to getting this thing finished. We still have a long way to go on this project, but this is a huge, huge milestone. Like I said, if you have any questions about this process or the project, very soon in the next week or two, we'll do a QA video of stripping all these forms and braces, and I'll answer any questions you guys have about it. I do appreciate you watching this video. I appreciate all the support and everybody tagging on. As always, thanks for watching.